In this section, we will create a simple straight ramp. We will utilize the rectangle tool and the automatic push-pull mode to quickly create the ramp. Then we will use the rotate tool to pivot the ramp up. Finally, using the project tool, we will create supports for the ramp. To make it easier to create the ramp, set the Rails class to Invisible. Activate the Rectangle tool and enable the Corner to Corner mode. Move the cursor over the bottom right corner of the left side of the elevated obstacle and acquire a smart point. Move the cursor to the right along the extension line. Click once to start the rectangle. Move the cursor out, tab into the floating data bar, set the delta x to 2.75 and the delta y to negative 1.25 and press enter or return twice to place the rectangle. Without clicking, move the cursor over the rectangle and use the automatic push-pull mode to extrude the rectangle. Set the distance to 0.15. With the ramp face selected, activate the rotate tool in the basic palette. Enable the first mode, standard mode, and standard rotation mode in the toolbar. Move the cursor over the ramp face. A protractor feedback graphic displays around the cursor. Align the protractor to the bottom right vertical face of the ramp face. Click once on the bottom left corner of the vertical face to set the point of rotation. Move the cursor along the bottom edge of the vertical face and click once to define the axis of rotation. Move the cursor up. You will see a preview of the rotated object. Tab into the floating data bar and set the working plane angle to 20 degrees. Press enter or return twice to rotate the ramp face. Now let's taper the bottom of the ramp. Activate the taper tool in the 3D modeling tool set and enable the second mode, picked face mode. Move the cursor over the ramp, hold the Alt key on Windows or the Option key on Mac to highlight the bottom face of the ramp. Click once to set the reference plane for the taper. Move the cursor over the side face that intersects the concrete base. When it highlights in red, Click once more to select the face of the taper. Finally, move your cursor out until it snaps to the concrete base. Click one more time to set the taper angle. Next, we will create supports for the ramp. Use the flyover tool to rotate the view slightly. Move the cursor over the bottom left corner of the elevated face Wait a few seconds until a smart point appears. Move the cursor down along the extension line until you intersect the concrete base. When the Smart Cursor queue Object slash Z appears, click once to start the rectangle. Acquire a second smart point on the bottom right corner of the elevated face. Move the cursor down along the extension line until you intersect the concrete base. When the Smart Cursor Q Object slash Y slash Align Y appears, tab into the floating data bar and set the Delta X to negative 0.15, make sure the Delta Y is 1.25, and press Enter or Return twice to place the rectangle. Click and drag the bottom midpoint of the rectangle to the left. Tab into the floating data bar, set the length to 0.5, and the working plane angle to 180 degrees, and press Enter or Return twice to move the rectangle. Now, let's duplicate the rectangle. Click and drag the bottom right control point to the left. Tab into the floating data bar and set the length to 1 and the working plane angle to 180 degrees. Press and hold the Control key on Windows or the Option key on Mac on your keyboard and press Enter or return twice to duplicate and move the rectangle. Now let's use the project tool from the 3D modeling tool set to create supports for the ramp. Activate the project tool and enable the add and add downward modes. Click once on the first rectangle, then click a second time on the ramp. The rectangle is projected to the bottom of the ramp. 
Repeat this action for the other rectangle. Now select the ramp and two supports. Go to Model, Add Solids. Finally, give the ramp a gray fill color in the Attributes palette. Now, let's mirror the ramp to create a jump and organize the nearby obstacles. With the ramp selected, activate the Mirror tool in the Basic palette and enable the Duplicate mode. Switch to a top plan view. Move the cursor over the midpoint of the right side of the ramp. Press the G key to set a datum. Tab into the floating data bar. Set the length to 1. Press Tab once to set the length and click once to start the mirror axis line. Move the cursor up vertically. When the Smart Cursor queue vertical is visible, click once to set the mirror axis and complete the operation. Now, select both ramps and go to Modify, Group. Next, let's turn the Rails class back on. Click on the Classes button in the view bar and set the Rails class to visible. Finally, using Smart Points, Align the objects so that the center of the elevated obstacle, ramps, and the long rail align. In this section, we will use the Extrude Along Path command to quickly create ledges on the sides of the left stairs. Switch to a left-rear isometric view and center the view to the left of the stairs. Set the Planters and Rails classes to Invisible. Activate the 3D Polygon tool in the 3D Modeling toolset. Move the cursor over the midpoint between the stairs and the edge of the concrete base. Press the G key to set a datum. Tab into the floating data bar. Set the length to 1 and press Tab again to set the X value. Move the cursor back and click once to start the 3D polygon. Click again at the datum point. Then move the cursor down the tapered face and click once at the base of the face. Finally, tab into the floating data bar, set the length to 1, press tab again to set the length, and double click to complete the 3D polygon. Now that we have a path that conforms to the tapered face, Let's create a profile and use the Extrude Along Path command. Double click on the Rectangle tool, set the width and height to 0.6, and click OK. Click once on the upper level of the skate park to place the rectangle. Select both the profile and the path, go to Model, Extrude Along Path, use the Previous and Next buttons to highlight the path object, make sure Lock Profile Plane and Fix Profile are unchecked, and click OK. We now have the base for our ledge. However, it is sitting below the surface of the concrete base. This is because when you created the Extrude Along Path object, the profile is centered on the path, which was on the top surface of the concrete base. So half of the extrude is below the surface. Let's edit the elevation of the path to move the base of the ledge up so it is no longer below the surface of the concrete base. Double-click on the ledge base and choose to edit the path. Switch to a back view. With the path object selected, set the Z to 0.3 in the Object Info palette. This is half the height of the profile and will move the ledge base on top of the concrete base. Click the Path Exit button in the top right corner of the drawing area to exit the Edit window and save the changes. Next, give the ledge base a turquoise fill color. Now move the ledge base so that the right side intersects the edge of the stairs. You will need to use the flyover tool to rotate the view and move the ledge as shown. Next, we will use the same procedure to create a top for the ledge. Switch back to a left rear isometric view. Use the 3D polygon tool to create a path along the top of the ledge base. Then use the Rectangle tool to draw a profile that is 0.8 in width and 0.15 in height. Make sure the rectangle is parallel with the edge of the stairs. If the rectangle is not parallel, adjust the rotation in the Object Info palette. Now use the Extrude Along Path command 
to extrude the profile along the path. Next, edit the Extrude Along Path object and adjust the height of the path so the ledge top is not below the surface of the ledge base. You will need to set the Z of the path to half the height of the profile, 0.075. Now give the ledge top a gray fill color. Finally, let's group the ledge base and top together and mirror the ledge to the other side of the stairs. Select both the top and base of the ledge and go to Modify, Group. With the ledge group selected, activate the Mirror tool in the Basic Palette and enable the Duplicate mode. Find the midpoint of the top stair. When the Smart Cursor cube midpoint appears, click once. Move the cursor up and to the left. When the Mirror Preview appears in the correct location on the other side of the stairs and the Smart Cursor cube X appears, click once to set the axis line. Now, set all classes to Visible and review the placement of the ledges.